say you got 46 of them here, and there's number 47 coming in. That's a forage burrow, is that? First built for the park, one of the good old burrows, that wonderful firm up in Thetford in Norfolk. Followed by number 43. That's a powder, forage powder by a fellow that we have seen before, just once from 1990 and 1992. Eric Hawkins of Bunston down in Cornwall. Drove it all the way up the A30 yeah. on the hard shot. <laughs> yeah, there's Al Howick coming from all the way from Guildford. Oh, it's driven by the grandson, that's who. This is Stuart Howick of Godalming and Surrey. Rallied all over the country with this one. And one of the members of our mini haulage team. Anything the biggins can do, these lads can do with the miniature. Now we've gone up to the sort of what they call the half slice now, the six inch scale old chip tower there, I'm sure. Number 39, a family that we have seen at occasional rally. They're from a place on the other side of the street. Now you keep forgetting the name of it. Uh, Looks like the borough we got coming down there, is that right? Ian yeah. Reid taking it nice and steady. Have you got any right on here? He said, who am I waving to? All that blasted noise going on up there. Never mind, won't be long before we see him driving it round, I'm sure. Number 45. Number 45. That young Clayton on the back coming around there, is it? Because I believe he was named after the um, Clayton and Shuttleworth roller called the Thatcher. And uh, it's strange to have, a, you know, we get many an engine named after owners and their families. But to get a, a child named after the regular member to your flock on that one. Are uh, they covered in soot? <laughs> as black as your hat, as usual, Arthur Honey come along in number 20 there with um, Taurus, that must be Taurus, should they? They have made a, spell of, a lot of spell of mistakes in here, Arthur. They left the key terms to build themselves a steam engine. Took a long time to build and a lot of tolerant families to put up with that. A round of applause for the miniatures in steam. Now we're going to hand you over for a special announcement for our news editor here, <laughs> 315 BBC Dorset, Mr. Mr. Lovery, over to you. Hello folks, nice to see you. Now some of you were at Bear Cross Rally, June the 19th. And uh, 198 here, you'll find it in your Scammell section. And this is the 1950, it's the Scammell Scarab, carrying on uh, the mechanical horse tradition, as you see from the... the uh, Aluminium casting on the front there with the horse's head. And this is the, the Sudeca with the AEC 7.7 .7 litre engine in there. As you can see, Maidstone and District Motor Services faithfully restored exactly the way a service bus would have been at that time. And it's owned by Mr. Yarnall uh, from St. Leonard's on Sea. Here's uh, number 111, Mr. McKenzie from Wakefield up there in Yorkshire, 1962 Bristol. 1956, <laughs> he brought another one down. He's got a handful of these tucked away up there. It's a 1956. And they were both, it could well have been converted to a curtain side four. And still with the Atkinson, this is nice. We've had pretty well all the versions of Atkinson here. And here's the eight legger. 134, 1967, it's the Mark II, eight wheeler flatbed, owned by Mr. Rainey from North Yorkshire. And if you look at this going by, you'll see the, the whole geometry of this particular vehicle, the way it's laid out to carry a heavy load and carry it effectively. And I'm not sure, but as it goes past, yes, I can see the couplings out there on the back. This particular vehicle, at one time when it's working, would have been pulling a drawbar trailer as well. Yeah. And it's Smivy, uh, the, the 1967 Scammell Highwayman. Very nice example there of the little ballast tractor. And as you can see, um, very, a lot of fiberglass construction in this cab by this time. Quite possibly, I, by the sounds of it, I would guess that 
It's the Leyland Beaver Lorry, Mr. Mason from Lancashire. And uh, this particular vehicle, if you look at it, it's got that uh, push-pull drawbar arrangement there, neatly folded up on the front, which says that at one time it would have worked with a trailer. And uh, I'm pretty certain that this one actually was an X-ray unit at one time, which would have had a great big lead line box up on the back there, uh, carrying a lot of X-ray equipment and also dragging a, a trailer around behind it. You can see the hook there tucked away above the spare wheel at the back on this one, uh, which is all you expect from people like this because uh, I don't think he bothered to put the number, which probably hasn't even entered. <laughs> just coming off the car park I expect. Another example here of the... and this is John Mitchell from Sussex. He's one of those people that's got to have something different every year. Well this is this year's offering and the eight-wheeler example here again another very nicely presented example of the way haulage was done before the articulated large common in East Sussex. And if you look at the body on the back of this, the ballast tractor body up there on the back, uh, this I would guess is a genuine Pickford's body that's been mounted on this one. If it's not a genuine Pickford's body, it's a very, very close copy of the Pickford's ballast body. Now, 1953 Scammell Pioneer, and this one is a show tractor. Many, many showmen had these tractors built. Some of them were converted and some were specially built. Scammell's built about 14 themselves. But here's a view who had side screens as well, and so they had illuminated trafficators on this Land Rover. And now almost inside the commentary box, the Scammell Pioneer. Scammell Pioneer, of course, now this was our medium recovery vehicle. Not a, it's been through a couple of hands since then. Brian Carter of the Scammell Register's got it now. CRF this afternoon, 146. Uh, very much not designed for off-road, very much designed for use on the hard surface. 1969, this one dates from Mr. Bell of uh, Staffordshire, presented by the AEC Matador Timber Tractor that we see coming up towards us, Mr. Littlechild from Cambridgeshire. The Matador, of course, wasn't produced as a timber tractor. I don't know whether this one was uh, military or RAF or even Navy, because they all had a few, although, of course, the primary user was the Army and uh, they were produced. We got trouble here with the public address in engineer interfering with the staff. Uh, well, you don't think I can interfere with you, do you? <laughs> <laughs> well, the offer's always there. <laughs> 1950 Bedford. And this is me, the Watts family stable. 1947, Austin, not the Bedford, it's an Austin. Take a second look at it and see Austin. Very, very similar in design. And it's the 4-litre straight-six petrol engine there, Austin's very own engine, owned by uh, Mr. and Mrs. Watts of Dorchester, and it's a uh, market garden and industrial use, but a very nice example there of the little Wrigley truck. Now, I haven't seen this one before, it's a new one on me. 1942 Austin, it's the K2 Austin, Mr. Coventry, uh, sorry, <laughs> yeah, Mr. Coventry, that's right, from Chelford and Strait, 1952 Scammell. Mr. Longford from Somerset. And as you can see this one, Lady Sarah, we've seen this one here in uh, various ownerships in previous years. But a very nice example of a heavy haulage tractor there with that nice chariot star back on there. And the adjustable pin on the back takes us back in time a little bit further. This, I think, is the earliest Atkinson we've seen so far. 1961. Mr. Young uh, from Blandford. Now just look at this, the Atkinson 8-wheeler. They hung on for a long time to that separate radiator grill out the front. Even on their later fiberglass cabs, they still had the separate radiator grill showing out on the cab, although it wasn't absolutely essential. Got a more heavy haulage tractor. And as you can see, it's in Pickford's livery. Well, uh, Pickford's, of course, used a lot of vehicles of this type. I mean, it was new to David Barry in Dundee, and all road transport was nationalised during the 1950s, and then it went to Glasgow, to Glasgow under Pickford's care, uh, where it was used for heavy haulage duties. And you can see here the livery as it would have been in the 1950s when it was working for Pickford. And it went into Showland use after that, Peter Jones of Mutswenlocker in Shropshire is the proud owner of this one. 
So uh, I wonder if he drove this one down the M5 at Den and Light for a nice, quiet, comfortable run. There's a timber crane, another timber crane conversion, and this one's uh, uh, the Noyce family who own, own this one from West Tillerley, up in near Salisbury. They've had this one in, uh, they've worked this one for many years and now it's been retired and they've kept it and hung on to it in 1953. Mr. Lips Liscombe from Wisbech in Cambridgeshire is responsible for this one. But it's a very, very special vehicle indeed because when you look at it, you'll see the cab is far from standard as we understand it in this country. Um, it's an export cab, really. It's designed specially for export to somewhere where it's a lot hotter. North Africa, Australia, or South Africa even will be the sort of places that cabs like this will be in use. If you notice the windscreens, apart from opening, which isn't that unique, the windscreens are recessed right over a cab there in that beautiful coach-built cab. I think it was uh, Bon Alloy cab, wasn't it? Wasn't it bon Bonarac. Bonarac built that one, that's it. Um, and uh, the, the, whole, the whole concept of the cab is to keep cool in hot weather so it's through. And now uh, Molly Rawlins, now she shouldn't have told me this if she didn't want me to tell you, but Molly's 70 this year. <laughs> Shut up, you told me. <laughs> Molly's 70 this year, just in case you didn't hear the first time. And she's out there driving around. Oh, I've got to go to work as well. It's a local based ownership. Uh, and it's Mr. Hacker from East Noyle. And with a 1926 Scammell Arctic unit. Uh, this year we, don't, we haven't brought the flatbed trailer. We brought a very nice tank along. Now, get an eye full of this as it goes round. It's not just a load of old scrap, you know. This is a piece of our motoring heritage. It's got the right turntable fitting on there. It, it, it may have caught fire at some stage, but, uh, but it's certainly very, very nice and very right for the vehicle.
stuff alongside the whole screen. So, um, whoever's lost it, come and get it. Longer work that out, but it. Look at the length of it. Big camel super constructor out the front there, Rolls Royce powered, 12 feet. Heavy automatic gearbox, followed by the big hand tower, built by Tony Cross the baby so lot of scammo on behind. A lovely RNX RAS camel there. Constructor. Once again a Rolls Royce engine. Some of these Rolls Royces up here are supercharged, some are turbo powered. I think that one is uh, just standard. But she's a very powerful machine. The old Scammell 6 speed gearbox in there with a 2 speed axle there. He's got 12 speeds on there. Built for, um, I believe, 80 ton capacity. 1960 model, that. Eh? Our big crane engine come here. Horsham Traction Company. Feral family, the owners of many of the steam engines you see on this show. Look at the width of those front wheels. They were there, of course, because it's a crane engine and when you've got a terrific weight. I don't know what the weight shifting power is of that um, jib on the front, but when you imagine you know, five or six tons on there even, there must be a lot of pressure on the front wheels and uh, they love to sink, especially here on a wet day. But we aren't going to have one this year, are we? Well, he's there with his great grand dealing. He's been great engines up on this uh, boat and others for many, many years. Not just little engines, I knew. Dealing was the safest person on the purchase ferries for quite a few years. And he's quite capable of driving the big ones, even big boat to see out there. Oh, he's got one hand shot. Yeah, and he's, they're making their way up through Watford Gap, up that one in 12 stroke there. Gently does it. Yeah, I can see why the queue were a bit hesitant on the Dennis bus. I think they were waiting to have a ride on the steam bus. I think this is always the favourite. 
lot, a lot of people have never seen it seen, but no one ever read on, read on, and this bus is a replica, of course, of the old bus that used to take the Foden's Motorworks van. And a lot of you youngsters throw this in with it. That was this Foden's Motorworks van. Well, come and ask him. David gave his impressions of a trombone. got any interesting stories connected with the, our wonderful heritage the steam and old vehicles. Well, very interesting chap coming earlier who shown us some really great photographs of those um, lorry cars and steam. And uh, it's lovely to see it, so don't be afraid to come in. It's quite harmless, really. It's got to be at my age. Do come in and chat about it, and we're always ready to listen to the stories. Well, we've got uh, some steam in action. This is the... Uh, big Fowler crane engine, uh, quite early built engine this, and it um, finished working right up in Scotland, and an engineering work, and until it came down here to the Great Dorset at Sea Fair a few years ago, it had never been south of Leeds, anyway. Heavy load, on the way back down again. Looks rather spectacular here on the field, you see these three wagons and the one big load, but many occasions I can remember in the past when we used to see things like this coming down our main roads. A lot of them travel by motorway now with a special exemption, don't they? But uh, they used to travel down to our county down the road 838 and make a few deviations and uh, Cause a lot of problems in villages with telegraph wires, etc. But it's a great fun, and the kids used to love to see it. A lot of these old lorries have done work for these various firms, Pickford's and other haulers firms. Wynn, remember those famous names? But there were other big hauliers as well who took part in the taking the heavy loads around the country. No other way to do that.
for the heavy haulage team. Getting urgent. So if you're out there, coal man, or anybody can see him, and he can't hear, telling the point is coal lorry towards the heavy haulage team.
up now towards Watford Gap and then they'll be charging up that hill the 1 in 12 slope wonderful spectacle
sure the engine's still there. It's so it's running so quietly. <laughs> anyway, if you would care to have a ride on one of these beautiful Sharabangs, do come along to the commentary point. Yeah, hello, what have we got here? Very unusual sight here. Two Aveling and Porter Road locomotives. Not one, but two. Jerry's not here at the moment. I, I heard all about this yesterday. It comes to something when they have to write notes on the side of their vehicles to tell the commentator what it's all about, doesn't they? Oh look, there's a field out here. <laughs>
collection of road rollers coming in now and uh, there you are John take a round show all those lovely steam rollers nice wave there no snogging in the back seat So coal lorry, now if any of you out there can see the coal lorry, go along and tap the driver on the shoulder, he's quite harmless, and ask him to go to the Burrow Crane engine, because he, he might not be able to hear us, so that's the coal ferry to the Burrow Crane engine. road towards the Watford Gap from the uh, Salisbury direction towards the Blanford direction. So when he gets to the barrier, have a word with the driver, please tell him that the Borough Crane engine wants to see him. He's hungry. And if you want to know where it is, it's up the top end here. Up the top. Like the big crane trailer. And I think that yes, there's a scammel pushing up behind and another scammel driven by Anita Broad pulling up the front. No, it's not, it's the big uh would that be Tatian car on the front. Yeah, I see the yellow top, the area colouring. So gracious me, there's so much going on here, David. The confusion set in an old age. Well, he said one of my light comes Sunday, well. Wait to see. At the present rate, he won't make it. Ah, <laughs> oh, we're doing fine. Yeah, now we're yeah. starting our roller collection. Now we've first of all got a lovely old powder roller here. This is the uh, one owned by um, Robert without a name on the front, though, isn't it? John Powder, please. Made that roller. Well, got it. Fine example. Fine old roller. Yeah, we spent his working days in Aberdeen. Took a long time to get down here. The next one's an Avon Porter, possibly the most common type of uh, steam roller. Avon Porter's of uh, Kent. This one's called Churchill, and it's man by the Churchill family. They named this uh, Churchill. It was on the um, Churchill estate in Pimlico, in the children's playground. But now it's come away from there. They thought, well, Churchill's a handsome name to give something that's British. But well, this is truly British. There's the Pleasant Church of Family. We've got the young lad, only uh, about 14, 15, but a fine body of a lad he is. There's a fine figure of a mum sitting on a bit of timber on the back there. That's what you call family taking part in it. Now, there's got to be a marshal coming around now. Marshal five horsepower roller, built in 1930 and new to Devon County Council. And it's still owned by the Devon County Council. I think this is rather good news to think that a county council that 
count every penny, etc. It's still a Ford, a, a C fit to keep a pre and preserve an old rotor. It's not maintained and run in their hands, but um, at least it still belongs to them. And long that may that for long, it's rather an authentic bit of styling there, the bucket hanging on it. Never saw a steam rotor without a bucket dangling there. Then number 19, Derek and Night Logic, bronze in hand with that pearl single. Daffodil. Now this is one of our favourites up here in the common ground. We go all of the bark of the borough single. Got a learner driver there today. Tell her to give us a bark on it. We do love to hear it. Isn't that lovely? We've got a well trained. What about the apprentice on the back there? That's a got away. Oh well, there's an interloper here, in principle, the Wallace Stevens coming through now. We don't mind you coming around with a roller. Feel free. Another Fowler roller, identical to the first one we saw coming in now. It's called Undaunted. Built in 1928. So was I. Owned by R.A. Fair. Care of R.A. Cox, Reading, Berkshire. Oh yes, we've got all the tower spraying gear fitted on this. I understand the driver up there, he's 71 years of age. And he's afraid to get into trouble up here in case somebody tells his mother. He's 105, would you believe? Next, got another Fowler. Four horsepower one, built 1923. Jason Howard of Swindon. This was owned by the Airborough Urban District Council Leeds until 1968. That's a pretty little roller, that. Really attractive. Okay. Number nine is Navis Porter. Angelina, owned by Ron Hood of Aldershot. There's Ron, he spent most of his time this year in America. Older Holt, I should have said, I do beg your pardon, Older Holt. And I bet he steamed it all the way. We were rather proud of Ron, the fact that he used to steam all the way, so we found he was too mean to rent an over low loader. You've still got your boss there, the chef. I don't know if you bring her along to look after the roller or feed you. when they were manned in their working days would be single man. But of course, everybody likes to ride, don't they? So we forgive them for that. Beautiful roller coming through now that won the prize at the Concord Delegon because of its immaculate um, appearance. It spends a lot of its time down on the Mayor Polish Falls. You can see it's in beautiful condition. It's Corky, the Marshall Universal Roller, owned by Dobbin Warren. Actually, it, it has had a wash since last year. That does amaze me. Number 14, the Evelyn and Barford diesel roller. Owned by Graham Atkins and the Fergus, built 1941. 
this is the type of roller that replaces the steam roller. They're much more efficient when it comes to uh, rolling car mechanics, etc., because they can reverse much uh, more quickly. Although that had originally been designed in the steam world by the Wallace uh, Simplicity, uh, not the Simplicity, the Wallace Advance, and some of the early marshals. More about that perhaps later if one turns up. steam and diesel in here since just after 10 o'clock this morning and these lads have certainly not only burnt a lot of coal and got rid of a lot of water, they got rid of a lot of energy as well, so I reckon their appetites will soon be pleading with them. They certainly put on a good day's demonstration and they go on for a little while yet. I hope you all appreciate what they do because these aren't paid employees, these are enthusiastic of the idiots who come here and do this for the week. Because, because when you think some of the old people, some of the old people, yeah, we are, we are the same, David. Some of the old people who used to do these jobs and hate every day of it, and now they're coming along here to do this just voluntarily for a weekend, and you're just black as a finger from dusk till dark and beyond, hot and tired, and you do it because you like doing it. Best of all, it entertains the public. Show that appreciation when you see them. 